with no further ado, one of the greatest executives in the league, and I would say uh, also one of the savviest roster builders and all around good guys and someone I've become pretty close with over the years and has been a dear friend in many moments for me. Uh, he's the GM of the Rams since 2012, and he has been in that role Aaron Donald's entire career. Mr. Les Snead, welcome to the season with Peter Schrager. You know, it's interesting, Peter, for the first time I, when you said uh, been in the roles in Aaron's entire season, I got chills. So yeah. it, I know we're going to talk it. a lot about Aaron Donald, but that was one of the first moments of, okay, chills that, wow, maybe it is over. I, I walked in Starbucks this morning and the barista there, really cool. Her name's Jackie. Uh, and she's a major Rams fan and she doesn't work on Fridays. Maybe she does, but I go in early in the morning, but first thing she said, I, I'm just so sad. I'm like, and she's never sad. She's always yeah. happy. I'm like, what are you? And she wasn't sad now saying it. And I was like, what are you talking about? What happened? Well, somebody should have told me Aaron Donald was going to retire. I said, oh, but you know what I mean? She was. And then the other two young baristas who probably go to probably students at Pepperdine, not really, you know, let's call it football people. And they're like, oh man, did he have one heck of a career? So yeah. think about it. Uh, we're going to go through it with you because I want to hear everything, the origin story, when you first laid eyes on all that. But I just said it on Good Morning Football today. 10 years in the NFL, eight time First team all pro. And the only two years he wasn't an all pro was his rookie season, which is so rare to see an all pro a rookie season. And the 2022 campaign where he had to shut it down for a little bit because of injury. I mean, are we talking about one of the greatest NFL careers ever? He's definitely, uh, I would go definitely one of those. Like there's going to be, there's, we can, we can debate all day long and analytics can spin it up and try to come up with a one. But if there's a pot of players that you're going to talk about being like one of the greatest, he's in that pot. However many there there are, you know, I mean, he's definitely one of those. He's in that pot of players, in that bucket of players to try to figure out where you rank them and sort them. But as a human being, um, I've gotten to know him just a little bit, and his wife Erica, they're awesome. And it's like my interaction with them have always been positive, big love, all that stuff. But you guys live and breathe it every day. And I said, you got there 2012. He gets drafted soon thereafter. I mean, you've known this man for more than a decade. Um, the human. Who? What don't we know of Aaron Donald who doesn't live on social media and isn't looking to be in a TikTok video every single day? Like, what What don't we know that you might know being with him all this time? That, that's a great question. And I had 10 things I wanted to get across in this podcast. I had a bonus 11th. That would be a very podcast. We go, we do a top 10 list and break it down. So I'm going to, but we'll get back to him. I want to make sure I hit him. But on that one, I, if I, on the surface level, I'll try to go to, we have this somewhat probably jestful saying in the building that, wow, let's call it the player that, when you watch on film and you go, wow, this guy is really, really talented. And then goes to the combine. And sometimes you can have a really good football player that doesn't do the jumps and the drills yeah. and all of that, but they go to the combine and blow that out too. And then, and again, I don't know whether this guy's a debacle or not, but the Jets would be, but they're also basically treat football like they're Rudy. Mm. Then you mm. got a first ballot hall of famer. Again, so you, you get you, you get where I'm going. So they, the the end of the and the the one thing I was going to say is about Aaron, which is is great for football because Aaron's an alpha on a football team. But at the end of the day, the collective has to be competent, and the fulfillment comes from the collective's success, right? And the thing I remember most about Aaron is this. Let's call it his entire career let's go to 2018 losing a super bowl and then up until we finally won it is i do know this there was there was a void inside of him mm. that it it burned fiercely but quietly 
but it was very contagious. And, you know, and you had this, this, it was one of those things. It was like, he didn't have to say it because he's a very quiet person. Uh, he didn't have to say it, but it's like, okay, what can we do to make sure this human being, right, fulfills that void? Now, if we were able to do that, right, as a front office, a coaching staff, and we were all going to, right, we were all going to get to wear a ring, but it was almost like that man deserves, he wants that so, so bad. So mm. that would be one thing. I think artist Twyman, you know, artists, of course, our VP of, uh, communications, public relations, PR, a little distraught that Aaron didn't have a press conference, right? The, the Jason Kelsey moment. Yep. And I was, a lot of us in the building were like, I mean, come on, Aaron Donald's similar to Barry Sanders. He's not flying to London, mm -hmm. but you know, that's just not him. And at some point he'll probably get on some platform or have a press conference and, and, and discuss you know, his career in football, but it, it just seemed, so that, that's just who Aaron is. My wife, Kara, who you were just talking to would definitely, would definitely want me to bring up, uh, his family, uh, his kids. Uh, when he first got to St. Louis, he had his first daughter, it, you know, it, his new life, it, you know, with Erica, it's just, he's that kind of, he's like, he's that father now that right is laying on the carpet somewhere playing, with his kids and He's those four it. things how, how do you mix that up and, and that's a little bit who aaron donald is i get emotional because when you say that you know it happens in 2018 and then it's been this quiet burning and here we are in the media and we're talking about stafford finally gets a chance and odell finally gets a chance and here's jalen ramsey and all along it's the guy that's been there since pretty much day one and it's no really the lifeblood of that team was number 99 in the middle. Who's not the flashy guy. And it isn't the one that's causing headlines. It's just the guy that goes out there and dominates every single day. Yeah, there's, and then in between the Rudy part I brought up, I, I talk think about that because I, I was, Jordan the, Rodriguez did a nice, I saw him. She wrote in the athletic uh, about it, how he's always, always had this chip on his shoulder, but less, I was at the senior bowl that year. And I did my mock draft that year and I eventually got Donald in the teens. But at the senior bowl, I, I look back what I wrote. I had Aaron Donald going 21st overall to like Arizona. And I said, unbelievable week at the senior bowl, dominated on, on every single drive. But is he too small to play in today's NFL? That's the question that's going to loom around him. And I feel like that never came up. In, in, in 10 years of football, we never said Aaron Donald's just not big enough to play in the NFL. So egg on my face and you know to you who drafted well, yeah, him I've, I've, I've mentioned that to aaron and uh, in it's interesting and i get it right in terms of shapes and sizes and you go to you use analytics and data he would be on the shorter smaller side of defensive linemen so he's on the left hand part of that bell curve when you bring it up to aaron donald he always considered that a strength and by that, he said, I usually played against taller offensive linemen. So I was born with leverage. And now it was up to me to take advantage of, right, the blessing I was gifted with by being shorter and smaller than everyone else. So he, he, he his whole, our paradigm is, wow, is he going to be able to overcome this disadvantage football handicap? Yeah. And he was like, wait a minute, this is an advantage. I would hate to be big and tall. I could never disturb the game like I do if I was taller or bigger. So it, it's fascinating when you, you chat with him about that. What do you remember? Boy, that, that senior bowl though. I mean, and that was he I, dominant. I just, he was unbelievable. Yeah, it was, I think some of our guys on the hall were when he did retire on Friday, there was a, someone right. Social media can be good or bad. And, you know, we, we can discuss that, right, whether it's good for your mental health or not. But sometimes it's very creative. But someone had cut up and tweeted out what have you, Instagram. I'm not sure which platform it was on, but his reps at the Senior Bowl, right? That. So, and but that was a very dominating Senior Bowl. No one could block him. Maybe Zach, if you go back and look at the offensive line there, 
a lot of those players from that senior bowl and that offensive line played a lot of years in the NFL. Zach Martin being one of them. Yeah. I mean, in today's world, I don't think Zach Martin or Aaron Donald even go to the senior bowl. But uh, at that time, they did. I can remember at the combine talking to every one of the offensive linemen at that senior bowl, Zach Martin included. And they were like, that's that's an alien. That's the single greatest football. There, there's no way you can block that human being. And and a lot of those guys, you know, some of them are still playing. Some of them had really, really good careers. But yeah, I, it's amazing because that combine, he goes and kicks butt. And then we get to the draft. You guys had the second overall pick. You took Greg Robinson, the big athletic tackle out of Auburn. And then we go through it and it's like Khalil Mack goes five and Sammy Watkins goes to the Bills and Mike That's, Evans. You know what's interesting? We'll, we'll, the only time we'll get off. Aaron yeah. Donald is uh, uh, someone who worked with us. He's now, he's still a consultant with us. His name's J.W. Jordan. It's a long time uh, with the Colts, with Bill Napoleon. Okay. And in that draft, his, our whole goal, his kind of goal was, let's be the Baltimore Ravens and draft two Hall of Famers. Yeah. Ogden, Ogden and Ray. And Ray, and Ray yeah. Lewis, right? But I was telling someone the other day, wow, did we F that up? Because we did it with Aaron Donald. But if you look at, those players that were in and around the top 10. It takes a lot of humility for you to say this. Close your eyes, thrown a dart and, and, and nailed a hall of famer. So, yeah. So uh, it's actually a really interesting draft. I went back. So Clowney went one. He was everyone's you guys took. Greg and Robinson. he's still playing, right? He's Clowney, so, Clowney was awesome this year. Clowney had 30, had his most career sacks, I think this year. Uh, and then you get Bortles and Sammy Watkins who are out of football, but had fine careers. And then you go through guys like Khalil Mack, Jake Matthews, Mike Evans, then you get the Justin Gilbert pick, then Anthony Barr, who had a nice career. Eric Ebron had a nice career. Taylor Lewan, great career. We're missing OBJ in there somewhere. Odell is after Taylor Lewan to oh, the really? Giants at 12. At 13, you guys get Aaron Donald. So, yes, you could have potentially had Khalil Mack and Aaron Donald. You could have potentially had Jake Matthews or Zach Martin and Aaron Donald. Of course, we can go a million different ways. But you get Aaron Donald at 13. When you drew the board up, did you know, like in your in your heart of hearts, like okay, we want Aaron Donald? Is that one of those where the board just fell that way? And it's like best available player. We it, it is interesting. I can say that uh, from the beginning, we felt like that Aaron Donald was a beautiful complementary piece to our defense. And at that time, Coach Fisher, Jeff, being a defensive coach, we had at that time Chris Long and Robert Quinn. We had drafted Michael Brockers who was also on the D line, but Michael, Michael was a very good run player, definitely affected the pass game. He's tall. And long. But at the end of the day, when you play Chris Long, you played Robert Quinn, a lot of QBs could step up, sure. right? They could, Chris and them could, could do their thing. QB could step up, still make things happen. So there was that, that moment, I think, and maybe some of my sociology of growing up that are, spending a lot of years in Atlanta playing Warren Sapp where you're like, holy cow, if you could, if we could have someone who could write disturb from the middle, what is that QB going to do in some of those known past? So he was definitely someone that we targeted and felt like would be right. A beautiful symbiotic piece for that, that defensive line. And, and the rest was history, even with that, with that crew, even though, we might not have had as much team success with those three, but boy, we were a ferocious defense. I can remember sometimes the Saints, and they were really good back Coach Payton there. Sure. It was almost like they just said, hey, we're just going to get in 21 personnel and hand it to the fullback and mm -hmm. sure that Drew Brees lives to see the rest of the Mike season. Mike Carney, get the ball and just go up the gut. Yeah, something like that. That was what they would do just because you're you know fearful of what's going to be coming over you from those Rams guys. I He's a rookie. You draft him. I remember he wasn't in Radio City, and I have a specific story about Ty Burrell, the actor, being in Radio City and being told, you're not going to do the Rams' first pick, but you're going to be on stage and give the jersey to the guy, their second pick, but Aaron Donald wasn't there, so Ty Burrell just never got to walk the stage. And I love that story, and I'm like, oh, that's so funny that you make the trip and all that. He wasn't there, but he comes here. So what were your first initial reactions those first few days when he shows up in St. Louis? And here's our new prize piece of this defensive line. You, here's what here's what I can sum it up by saying this. And and let's go, this isn't the first few days. Uh, this isn't 
necessarily the first year. Second training camp, August, uh, after his rookie year. And so this would be initial. And this is just Aaron Donald and who he is. Basically, who he is in the building, who he is off the field. He's one of those guys that would be on Friday night. You may come in at 8 p.m. And he would still, he, he had a routine where he would do sauna and go, he would be there on Friday night watching the film with the opponent, maybe till eight, nine. On a Friday night in on training. Friday. And, and, or in the season. This is either way, season. either yeah. way. So the training camp story is this Chris Long, Will Hayes, and Jess coming off the field one day at random August and just said, Hey, all we're going to tell you is this is you, the Rams should just make Aaron Donald the highest played player in football right now. He deserves it. I know you. William Hayes didn't season. really know the salary second cap. season. Yeah. Chris Long kind of had a clue that I know you can't do it, but you should do it. Like if you're ever just going to break the rules and do it, <laughs> he's he's the one. Do it for him. Is he one of those guys that you would see stuff in practice that just everyone just kind of looks at each other and gasps and says, what are we watching here? Well, the the best practice story, we, we could go on. Yeah, let's go deep. The best thing that ever happened to Sean in his first year is he was holding out because you, in OTAs with no pads on, you could not block it. He he he, he would just dis, he just disturb that you couldn't even he was in the backfield every play. I mean, it's, you couldn't block him. You had that once you get pads on, people can hold and grab and maybe. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, Sean, you're if you would if he would have not held out. You would have lost your stinger, your dapper. You probably wouldn't have been able to call a play. You'd have felt like we couldn't even block yeah. uh, anyone. That's that's kind of how that's kind of who that human was. And I forget the question and where I was going. I had a really good story, but that, that one training camp story. I said a practice. Oh yeah, like, but the oh, best yeah. football story was uh, it was probably an OTA, probably uh, probably a college free agent offensive lineman uh, getting a little bit of a scuffle. Okay, and Aaron just grabbed his face mask and with a flick of a wrist popped the face mask off the helmet oh my god and then threw it back at the guy like he threw it but the point being is this is this is all within the last this is since we've been in LA there's a lot of technology that goes into those helmets like <laughs> you buy an NFL helmet right now all the viewers however many people are watching this listen to this go order an authentic NFL helmet and then set your timer and and see who can get the face mask off that helmet as fast as possible. He got that face mask off the helmet in one flick of a wrist, which is probably – but the cool thing is he kind of threw it right back to him. Right back at him. Go, or, go, go put this back together. Screw it in yourself. Yeah, the poor offensive line is like, But what? That's, that's the freakish human thing that – he definitely could do. Oh my gosh. And then you see the offseason videos of him jumping out of pools from a standing broad jump. Like the athlete, forget the person, forget the work ethic, forget the stuff. The athlete itself, it's alien stuff. Am I right? Oh yeah. That's the I think I'm I mentioned it. It was as we talked about going back, I can remember uh a little bit initially. I can remember with Kevin Demall and he came in, we were in St. Louis and our office was right next to each other. And we we're what Aaron Donald happened to be on film, uh, watching him and Kevin, Kevin, if you know, Kevin, like, right. ADHD, whatever it is, curious mind. He can only watch so many football plays. Like, you know, he can't really watch 10 in a row. It's a little boring per se to him. It's too smart for football, but we are however many plays we did 10, 15, 20, like, man, that's a heck of a highlight film. And I'm like, no, Kevin, that's just a, that's just a Saturday Pittsburgh against NC state. And every play he is in the backfield. So as you mentioned, he dominated the, the uh, senior bowl, but I can remember obviously blew out the combine. But the one thing that I do remember going in and, and sitting and uh, mentioning the Jeff, was his short shuttle and three cones 
were basically at defensive back levels. We yeah. had a big we had a big uh, DB at the time, uh, Tremaine Johnson, who was yeah. closest at Montana, to, right? Tremaine Montana, two ten, yeah. but he had better three short shuttle than, and he was starting for us. And ended up having a nice head. career. Got paid that, by the Jets. I can remember uh, sitting at uh, man, what's the steakhouse in Indy? Yeah, St. Elmo's. Yeah. We hadn't gone to Indian so long. I forgot about saying yeah, so no. embarrassing. I'm there. I, I basically have a second home there with all my combine time there. But, go but on. It was, it, we used to spend the day after the combine when everybody left, we'd spend yeah. my night there to kind of organize our thoughts. And I remember sitting, it was probably Brad Holmes, myself, probably four of us at a table and Warren Sapp was sitting next to us and huh. Warren and my wife, Kara are tight. I've gotten to know Warren a little bit, but I can remember Warren just basically going, Sneed, if you don't draft Aaron Donald, you're basically the dumbest human being. And I'm like, shh. Yeah, it's not, hello. But the that's where we're going back to. This guy could really, really play football good, but went to the combine and did some freakish things. So what you would see on the football field, there is, wow, there's a freak there for sure. Um, all right, NFL, Aaron Donald, the Super Bowl run, the first one, the second one, what stands out from on the field in those big moments and Aaron Donald doing his thing? I think the thing that, that stands out the most is if you talk about, we, we, we mentioned earlier, right, that, that void that burned, and then it came down to uh, what Sean talks about, uh, situational match, but being great when – when grade is required and 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 then in jordan's rodrigue's article on friday when he retired you, you forget about it right we've all seen even my friends will send me the clips of right that have come out with sean on that fourth down aaron donald's gonna make a play fourth make a play. play up three and, super bowl aaron donald will make a play and, and he does it and sean says to everyone i told you he'd make a play but the and Jordan, let's call it, let's call it stimulated the memory of going. And if you watch it on film, on the third and one, uh, the Bengals run the ball and Aaron Donald basically sticks one arm out and drags. I'm not sure it was Mixon. Maybe it was Mixon. Might have been P. Ryan, if I'm not mistaken. But P. Ryan was on on fourth down. But maybe it was P. Ryan. I forget. Long story short, both of those backs are big. With one arm, basically, being double teamed, grabbed the guy and stopped the human from getting a yard. If they get that yard, they got another set of four downs. They've had a kicker who was very hot. So you just think about... Again, this is all this human played football for was to wear the ring. And in those two, it came down to a third and one in four. A lot of people might go, oh, man, it's one yard. He's probably looking at it like never asking that. You know what? Good. It's they need one. They're not getting one. Come through me. Third, they're not getting one on fourth. That's that's him. There's a lot of highlights you can. Again, the moment, the situation, that play, those two plays, uh, right? Look, I throw a memory at you. I, I, okay, so we have access to all the NFL films and all the game tape. And I've got an amazing producer on Good Morning Football, a guy named Steve Korn. And I was like, can you go back and watch? There's a game that you guys played against Tampa where there was a rain delay because of lightning. Yes. Like 2016. And I specifically remember Aaron Donald lining up at outside linebacker. Is this a figment in my imagination? We went back. I couldn't find a play to show, but like that, I think he played like two different series, that outside linebacker in a three, four alignment. Am I crazy or did that happen? That's I'm pretty sure that happened. I can't, I don't necessarily remember that. I couldn't I remember, find it. I remember the long delay in, in Tampa, but yes, I know there were definitely times when different coordinators would try to match up Aaron versus, you know. Think the, about that. Try to find a little bit of a weaker link on the OL. Are there any defensive tackles in the history of the sport who would move out to OLB? No. This one's – he's a freak. He's, he's special. A freak. I remember when I mentioned to Jeff that, hey, this guy can, you know, basically is three-cone short shuttles at DB levels. He says, 
what do we what do you want to do play him at nickel you know no, not, maybe it's maybe, not, maybe not nickel. come on third down i showed the, on the, I showed the two plays today Edelman. yeah let's go i showed the two plays today there was a fumble recovery against the seahawks in 2021 20, maybe where he tosses the dude on the sideline when he gets the ball in his hands and there's another fumble recovery he has earlier in his career where he's got the ball in his hands and the runner and i i said if i have one great regret about aaron donald's career we never saw him in that in that short yardage running back role but holy crap can he just do that too you know uh yes uh my wife Kara, i've mentioned her a few times you know her, we know her she's always wondered why didn't y'all play aaron donald at running back on the goal line. And I'm like, well, I mentioned it to Sean. He says, you know, we don't have a goal line offense. Oh, okay. Like, we don't have a goal line. But I'm like, so obviously with our ties to Texas now and and my stepson, her son playing at Texas in the Big 12 championship, they got big sweat, a touchdown. Yep. Then maybe in one of the final four games, they got uh, Byron Murphy. Yeah, the touchdown. other big boy. Yep. So Kara's like, see, that's <laughs> what Aaron Donald could do. We but it just- is – it was crazy when he would get the ball in his hands, though, because he immediately, both times, in these both these long fumble recoveries, he takes a second, and he, like, looks at the field like he's Marshall Falk. And he's like, I'm going to diagnose where to go, and he's got nice footwork, and it's like, oh, my God, this guy could have done that, too. Missed the boat. The fridge. The fridge. William yeah. Perry, let's go. Bring him back. Let's go. Um, in the locker room with younger guys, I get the sense – he was a real guiding light, and that's not a story that's been written a million times. But when you see Kobe Turner and Bryant Young play like they played this season, I have to imagine Aaron Donald was a very, very big influence on both of those guys. Well, it's fascinating. I think all rookies, especially at that age gap, right? Aaron going into his tenure, they're going into his rook- their rookie years. I mean, they've grown up watching those highlights we've been discussing. So there is an element of like, all oh, like this is my teammate now it's unbelievable uh and then i think what's what's very very overwhelming at times will be the moment they realize holy cow they go to the practice field and maybe they're somewhat early and aaron's been out there already mm. and is sweaty and, and Okay, that's Aaron Donald. Maybe this, is, but then it's the next day, and it's the next day. That's your standard. It's the next day, and it's the next day. So at the end of the day, there was not like Aaron doesn't need a T-shirt. He doesn't need a sign. It's more like, hey, this is the standards being lived, and it, it can be somewhat stressful, overwhelming. Uh, Aaron's one of those guys that, hey, on a on a Friday, he's gonna he's going to want to go in the weight room and work out like it's a, a Tuesday in February mm-hmm. or Tuesday in March when there's no football going on, you know, the, so it, it, that's the, the neat thing is that I think it's, we said a little bit and was cool about post Super Bowl, post let's call it Super Bowl hangover coming into this year and, and really sitting down with Aaron and saying, okay, we're going to need to go, young, less experienced, have a lot of players on their rookie contracts. And this, this, this quote, this sign is in the, you know, it's, it's ingrained in us now. And it's, it's a standard for probably every position. Now, when we go to draft someone is he just said, Hey, I'll partner with anyone. Just make sure they care. Mm. Sure. They care. And And if you, if you were a rookie and you cared, Aaron Donald's one of those types, like, I'm not necessarily going to get to know your name day one or two. I'll figure out whether I want to learn your name once you show that you care. And then at that point, uh, you're, you know. On you. You're in. You're in. But you better show you care. You better not tell him you care. I wrote that down, Les. I love that. (laughs) I'll partner with anyone. Just make sure they care. It's selfless, but it's also you draft the guy, you make sure he's made of the right stuff because you have to be made of the right stuff to even be on my level. I love that. I'll paraphrase this. Even when we were hiring Sean, 
and we were going through a coaching change and you're, you're chatting with Aaron about what would you like to see in a new coach? And it, and Aaron wasn't someone who's going to be nuanced. I'd like to see this and this. He said, Hey yeah. man, that seems like that's y'all's job. Hmm. Just make sure they're really good yep. and make sure they get us where we want to go. And you know where we want to go. Like it, and you're like, okay, I get it. Like, I'm a, I'm a Hall of Fame defensive lineman. Seems like you guys are the ones that need to try to figure out who to hire as a coach. Just to make sure the guy's really, really good. Uh, Albert Breer wrote about it, and I talked to McVeigh on Friday about it. You guys kind of knew this was the final ride going into this season. Uh, and Sean said a quote that I got goosebumps on. He said that Aaron told him with his family situation and with the Super Bowl ring. And after that Detroit loss in the playoffs where he left it all in the field, the term was I'm full. I'm good. Like I'm full coach. I'm full. Um, you guys kind of knew. And yet what I so respect from your building and I've had Kevin Demoff as a podcast guest and I've hosted a podcast with Sean and you and I go back so long and you've been on this. It didn't make its way outside the building and you guys kind of kept that in house. I think that's pretty cool. Um, there has to be some sort of pride and Hey, we're a family. Let's, let's keep it within us. So it's on Aaron to tell I think, the world. I think, I think it has to do with the respect. Aaron, we, we know football ecosystems, even, even when people, I don't want to call it leak, but sometimes leaks occur by right. People in football like to, yeah. Talk about exchange football. information. Football. So it could be like right in Indy, uh, when you're off duty per se, and something gets said, next thing you know, it travels. And I, I think with with Aaron, the respect that he had in our building, you, you were good. It, it was you just it, just like everything, right? You hey, Aaron's gonna get to retire when he wants to retire. Yeah. That's and you know, you don't really need to have any meetings and go, hey, make sure remember. No one talks about Aaron. Like it's it's really kind of he's kind of one of those people that he okay, Aaron's gonna he wants to do it this way. We're gonna allow him to do it. So yeah, you're 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 exactly right. Really, really cool to see that come to fruition. Now I did tell Aaron, uh I called him and because I knew I was doing the when we didn't go to the combine, we were gonna sit with the local yeah. media. And I'm like, Aaron you're making this really, really hard. Yeah, because they're going to ask. He's going to ask me about you. And I said, Aaron, here's what I can tell you. I have no problem just doing a bold face lie for you. Have no problem. <laughs> but just want you to know, you're making it really, really hard. I will lie for you. Yeah. But it's not going to be easy. Uh, on that point, there was like a very quiet roster move on Tuesday of the week that I feel like People didn't pick up on like you guys kind of restructured. Oh, you, things. you know Tony Pastor's. It's probably one of the let's call it highlights of his career to be able to engineer that. So oh, that snuck that under the radar. A few others. It's a Friday. Explain it for explain it for the field listeners. Yates couldn't this is, get it. You know, so field, field Yates goes, usually gets yeah. that whole transcript from someone, and he just reports on the minutia of the transaction wire. And yet this one, Aaron Donald restructure kind of falls within. Which wide receiver three is signing with some team and free agent frenzy? Uh, explain the little maneuver you guys did. And I can't explain reason. that maneuver. That's we got to bring Tony on the podcast. You did a heck of a job doing it on, uh, on, on, uh, the uh, good, good morning, good morning football. Morning. I'm trying, I'm reading about I'm like, how did I win? You know, but I, I do know a little bit. But like you said, you summed it up right. It, it was a salary cap mechanism that was kind of always somewhat planned, be able to give him you know, the, the, the bonus that he had deserved. We had always talked about this being a two year thing and, and whether he'd have played or not this year, we, you would have had to figure out year three. So something was coming, uh, but nice work. And now there's a little, yeah. And now there's a little room to not only make a move, but you guys can kind of do your defense in a post Aaron Donald role without the pressures of, Oh my God, we're paying him 39 million this year. And we've got this, this albatross around us for a guy, not on the team. It was pretty great. I've been, I think the mantra in our building now is I think I said it uh, a little bit to to match Aaron's very right concise way of going about his business. But and I've said, hey, that it it really is true. There's there will never be another Aaron Donald. So our the journey's not okay. We got to go find our next Aaron Donald like that. 
that is not happening. There's not another one on the planet. Uh, so guess what? Let's go find good defensive players and begin the next chapter. But we're not looking for the next Aaron Donald. He doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. Um, I'm going to wrap with two quick ones. One, I said on the show, he can go coach. He can go back to Pittsburgh. He can go into wherever he wants to go and live a life, like you said, cuddling with kids on the couch. I, I threw out something that I've gotten a lot of negative pushback, not on Aaron, but on me saying, well, you clearly don't know Aaron Donald. But I said, after all these years in Los Angeles and his reputation as such an incredibly beloved player, he's ever done, done everything always right. And with his physique and his build and with Hollywood now banking on superheroes and action stars, and there's no more romantic comedies and small budget films. I would not be shocked to see Aaron Donald in a movie a la John Cena or The Rock. Am I off my rocker in that Aaron Donald could be a Hollywood action hero? I think he definitely has that potential, right? And I, if I were, I haven't seen it yet, but I saw the documentary uh, and I'd love to watch it, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I haven't so, seen it right? I hear it's awesome. But it seems like that, right? Bodybuilder turned Terminator, heck, governor, whatever. But point being, he went from a bodybuilder to Terminator to, right, action figure, mega star. It seems like Aaron has that. So that'd be a good, I'd start with the documentary. I know, I know The Rock's been in our building yep. filming things and him and Aaron working out so that there's definitely, there's, there's definitely there. some rock. There's a relationship. And then, you know, now it's just, you know, figure, I, I, Pat McAfee, said something the other day and i'm like you know he probably knows that world better than i do but he WWE? basically he probably but ba i think the wma that's probably something that's that is that probably helps you become an act because it is acting but you take these and you learn how to play a character right and snap in the character so maybe wrestling first in but I, in this world of youtube i pat mcfee truly said he could probably go in the weight room do a feat once a week and put it on YouTube and it would get all these views and he would just get paid for those views. I have never had a YouTube video go viral other than probably the Cole Strange one by accident. <laughs> Which wasn't what you guys yeah, wanted to go viral. Anything for it, but point being is I don't know that world, but it does seem like, okay, you can maybe, maybe start with the YouTube feat of the week in the weight room. Aaron Donald ripping a face mask off. It goes viral, and then we go from there. But he definitely has potential to end his career. I mean, if Merlin Olsen can do it right, from a defensive line, my, uh, L.A. Ram defensive lineman Aaron Donald can do it. There's a history. You got Merlin Olsen, and then I think a Fred Dreyer, Rams legend, going on to be in Hunter. Oh, yeah. like there's a history here. Um, my last one for you, and it's Aaron Donald related. You've had this incredible NFL career, this decorated life, um, charting your time. From college to Atlanta to, to St. Louis to LA. When you look back on it, I know it's very reflective and I don't tend to take a step back when you're in the midst of free agency and draft planning. Do you think Aaron Donald's the greatest professional feat that you've had as far as player selections and assessing talent coming out of the college ranks? I think that's an easy yes. I think someone... I think one of I think my kids asked me this weekend, are you going in five years or are you going to the Hall of Fame? And you know me a little bit. My kids know me. At the end of the day, I'm an introvert. And you know, I, I would rather not I'm just as good escaping to SoCal enjoying the day and not partaking in, oh, let's go to uh it's party. let's go to let's go to the Hall of Fame and go to this party. If I go to the Hall of Fame, I don't want to go to the party. Kara may drag me to a party, yeah, be but I'm getting drugged to the party. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but at the end of the day, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be there for that one for sure. Unbelievable. What a football life. Uh, Les, I'm going to have you on again and we're, we're going to talk things like Stafford and, you know, Kevin Dotson and Jonah Jackson and what we're building on the offensive line. But I thought it would be only appropriate to go all Aaron Donald on this sucker and my gosh we went 45 minutes and i feel like we could have done 45 minutes more uh any closing words on the aaron donald era in st louis and la for listeners at home it, 
we throw around the word uh, rare, unique often, sometimes too much, but he's definitely, uh, he's definitely rare. And, and what's fascinating is, is to think where he is now. It just seems like in hindsight, that was easy, but going back to I mean, he, he was, he didn't come out as an underclassman. He came out as a senior, went to the senior bowl. He's undersized. I can remember probably post junior year, Aaron Donald's probably shows up on a national NFL NFS list. Be interesting what their grade was. We didn't have these, right? Hey, screaming, he's going to be a first yeah. ballot Hall of Fame grade. But people were aware this Aaron Donald, is he too big? And I remember Billy Johnson. So Billy Johnson's uh, an area scout force now. We had just hired him. Uh, his dad's a longtime defensive line coach. He had, he had just come from Tulane as a long snapper. And he wanted to get in scouting. So he's a scouting assistant. And 20 I 20 something remember, years old, 22, 23. Yeah, 20, and we kind of had these guys that we had pegged that would be okay, these guys are kind of guys we should try to figure out. Again, they're not, oh, let's they're not Jadavian Clowney where yeah. he's gonna be a first rounder since he's in ninth grade type player. But it was like, hey, this guy, we got him at a kind of a middle to late round draft pick, but y'all might need to watch this guy more. Like he, he looks like he's better again. He's trying to articulate in a way that I know, look, I'm just a long snapper from the look in his eyes though. Our guys, they're, they're talking second, third round here. Yeah. I I don't know what to give him, but somebody needs to watch this guy. And and you think about how it all started kind of, that's kind of Aaron Donald in a nutshell, probably always uh, underwhelmed from a, stature standpoint but every time he stepped on a football field in a football building anywhere he made a rare impact mm. on that organization on that team in that community beautiful uh Les need thank you this was awesome and what a tribute to aaron donald uh one of the greatest we've ever seen i so appreciate you Les. you took time out of the busiest season of Busiest time of year year. Yeah, this is this is peak off season GM mode, and you took forty five minutes with me just to chat about one of the greatest players. To it ever would have only been for you and the subject, Aaron Donald. That's it. 